Yes. 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 We are the Zetas. We are happy to bring you this bedtime story. Once upon a time, on a planet that exists in this galaxy, People lived in harmony with nature and with each other. The people of this planet were never at war with each other. There was no violence. There was no shortage. Everyone had enough. Everyone was well fed, clothed, and had adequate housing. And when someone was in trouble, the community came together to help. Soon, one of the communities started to develop technology. They became very interested in what else was out there in the stars, different places that they could perhaps visit. The scientists of this community, which we will call the science community, began to realize that the easiest way for a person living on their world to get to another world would be to transport, to teleport the person's consciousness and body to another world. And so they worked on day and night technology that would be able to transport a person from one place to another. It didn't take long before they had their first successful trial with a rock. And then they had a plant successfully transport. And then an insect.
And finally, they had to test on a being that would be similar enough to a person. And so they chose the equivalent of a rodent to test upon. And the first several trials were unsuccessful. The rodents who survived the teleportation would be mangled in appearance, organs out of place, and they would die soon after. The scientists of the science community worked tirelessly, endlessly, to fix the problem. Meanwhile, in the other communities living on this world were still not interested in developing machines. They enjoyed working in the fields, to grow food, making clothes by hand, building shelter with what they could find in nature. Not only were they unconcerned with developing science and technology, they also could feel that the science community was going down a path that ultimately would not be good for anyone. And they expressed their concerns in a sort of gathering of leaders of the communities, the elders, but the science community was so enthusiastic about what they were building and what the possibilities were for this technology that the rest of the people on the world backed down and said, if you feel that strongly about it, Go ahead, but be careful and do not lose your sense of who you are in the process. And the leaders of the science community said, yes, 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 we will. And scurried off back into their labs and their places where they performed the experiments. while the rest of the people continued to enjoy sunsets, sunrises, a warm summer rain, playing in the ponds, lakes, oceans, rivers, streams, hiking in the mountains, living a simple life where they enjoyed what they had. They enjoyed each other. And as the science community was building their giant teleportation machine, the other communities were focusing on meditation, on communication that was telepathic. Some were even becoming adept at moving objects with their minds and their will and their knowing that everything 
was energy and everything was connected through consciousness. These nature communities continue to thrive and evolve spiritually. Meanwhile, the members of the science community were getting less sleep. They were relying on plant stimulants to stay awake and to focus. They were obsessed with getting this machine to transport a being with organs, eyes, skin. And so they continued to test on the rodents that they would catch. And they failed and failed and failed again. Finally, one day when one of the scientists was asleep, she had a dream. And in her dream, she got the answer the information they needed that was missing from their experiments, their equations. The machine needed a crystal that was easy to find on that world. And so even though the other scientists were skeptical of this dream as a way of receiving scientifically valid information, they allowed a few of the scientists to go off and gather up these crystals, placing the crystals in the machine was in fact needed for the teleportation to work on a being like a rodent and then a bigger animal was tested upon and again it worked and then finally the scientist who had began this journey with his own equations and his own ideas was the one who agreed to be the test subject for a humanoid being. And he transported himself successfully on the first try. And there was a great celebration that night in the science community, the other communities took note that their heaviness was gone. The dark cloud that seemed to exist over that community had lifted. And the collective consciousness could feel the peace that had been attained even though they had no idea of what was to come. The next step for the science community was to teleport a humanoid being to another world and to be able to bring that person back was especially tricky. And so they practiced getting coordinates just right, different spots on their world were targeted 
and the machine had developed a pinpoint accuracy. As long as the scientist was holding one of the crystals, the teleportation machine would be able to find them anywhere on the world and bring them back. And so the first test was to send someone to the moon that was closest to the planet and bring them back. And once again, the scientist who had started it all volunteered to go to the moon and back. Theirs was a very nice moon, not like Earth's moon, but a moon that could support humanoid life. And so he didn't need a spacesuit, he just needed his crystal. And he successfully teleported to the moon in the joy that he felt when he set foot on that moon was indescribable. His life work, his mission, it was a success. He was split between wanting to come back and tell the others and wanting to explore the moon, but they had decided on a time frame of five minutes. That's all the time he had to walk around the moon and see what was there. He gathered up some samples, put them in his pocket, and the teleportation device brought him back to their world. Once again, the other communities living on the world could feel the vibration of the science community rising up and becoming less dark and heavy as they felt their joy from their success and they celebrated that night. Meanwhile, the elders of the nature communities gathered together to discuss the abilities that people were developing within themselves, the ability to communicate telepathically and to utilize telekinesis in the building of homes. They were becoming more advanced spiritually and they wanted to develop some guidelines around it, around not invading other people's privacy with telepathy around not building anything that was so high that it would be dangerous to others. And so they moved forward with these new gifts and abilities in the communities with caution and with respect for nature and each other. Meanwhile, in the science community, the samples that the head scientist had brought back from their moon had an effect on the scientists. As they breathed in the dust from their moon, 
and compromise their immune systems and they begin to get sick. The sickness spread through the community very quickly. And by the next morning, they were all sick. And it was hard for them to function. It was hard for them to feed themselves because they felt so tired and so much pain in their bodies. The other communities could see this from afar, they could feel it. And they knew that something had to be done. They could not just sit back and watch these members of the science community suffer. And so they use their limited technology that they had developed within themselves of telekinesis to send food and supplies to the science community. The scientists were amazed. They were both happy to be given this beautiful bounty of food and herbs, water, everything they needed to recover from the illness that they had contracted from these foreign materials brought back from the moon. And so, once they fully recovered, they waited a few weeks before leaving their community. And the head scientist went to the elders of the other communities first to thank them for what they had done, and then to inquire what type of technology they were using to deliver the food, the water, and the herbs to them in their time of need. And the elders were very honest about the truth that they had no such technology, that they had been focusing on their abilities to utilize the power of their will, the power of their minds, their consciousness, their feelings to be able to move matter around. The head scientist was suspicious. Even though they would demonstrate to him what they could do simply by closing their eyes and focusing, he was still looking for some sort of device that was hidden in the room that was making it all happen. He asked them if they worked with crystals. And the elders said, yes, we do enjoy the energies that we can feel coming off of the beautiful crystals that we have. And that was enough for the scientist. He 
thought that he had figured it out. That was the crystals that were doing the work of transporting the physical stuff to a different location. And he did not give any credit to the meditation and the focus of the people in the nature communities. Instead, he went back to the science community and he now had even more faith in these crystals than he did before that they were utilizing with the machine. And the science community began to set their sights on another planet within their system. A planet that was very far away. This time, the head scientist agreed not to bring anything back and knew that he would have to develop a type of space suit that the gravity might be different, that the atmosphere might be different on this other world. And so, finally, the machine was ready, the coordinates were set, and the head scientist transported himself to another world in their system. And this time, they agreed that he should be able to stay for longer than five minutes. And so he was set to return in seven of their hours to his home world, which gave him lots of time to explore. When he arrived, he was fully engaged in the beauty of this planet. The colors were more vibrant. There were enormous butterflies, waterfalls everywhere, beautiful trees. The sky was pink, the sand was purple. He explored this world and was so eager to test the air to see if he could breathe it in. But he was cautious after the moon experience, and so he just enjoyed what he could see and hear. And then, off in the distance, there were some people, people who looked different from the people on his world, but that were humanoid. They had different color skin. Their hair was different. They dressed differently. But they were intelligent, humanoid life. And they were fascinated by this visitor in this strange costume. They were peaceful people. They walked up to him, started touching the spacesuit, and he would both feel the fear and the excitement, the laughter, the joy within himself as he 
knew that this was something that was huge. Now the people of this world did not mean him any harm. They were just exploring his suit. And one of them accidentally tore it right in the spot where the crystal that he needed to return home was a part of his suit and it fell out onto the ground and the people of the new world were fascinated by it. scientist tried to show his objections to them taking it, but they were so fascinated by the crystal that they couldn't even notice his objections. One of them was particularly excited by it and took it and ran, holding it in the air and the poor scientist tried to run after, but the atmosphere was getting in through the hole in his suit and he was having a hard time breathing. It was too much for him, the difference in the atmosphere. And meanwhile, the seven hours were up. The scientists back on his home world were trying to bring him back. But instead, they brought back this person from another world holding the crystal. A person who was now in complete amazement of what had just occurred. He could not believe what he was seeing, what he was experiencing. And he also was having a hard time breathing and adjusting to the different gravity of the home world of the scientist. His initial reaction to all of this was to run and run and run. The scientists chased him because they wanted to help and because they wanted to know what happened to the head scientist and how this being came to hold the crystal, but they could not communicate. They had not developed their telepathy. There was no common ground And so, the head scientist soon ran out of breath, and he died. And the visitor from another planet also died, clutching the crystal. And the people of the other world were in astonishment that their friend had just disappeared. But they did not blame the scientist. They honored him. They gave him a proper funeral and burial. And the people of the head scientist's world honored this traveler from another planet and gave him a proper burial. 
knowing that their souls, their essences would be able to travel wherever they wanted to go. Everything that the science community had built and constructed needed to be taken apart and buried in the ground as well, forgotten about. as they had learned their lesson. And soon there was no science community. There were just communities. There was no split between nature and science. But instead, the communities who had developed their Telepathy and telekinesis taught the people who were formerly of the science community how to evolve from within, how to work on their inner technology, how to develop their gifts and abilities by going beyond their minds, by going within. And soon, the people who were formerly of the science community caught up to all of the other people on the world in terms of their spiritual evolution. And once again, there was peace and tranquility. And along with that, there was a heightened sense of awareness that the next gift that they would develop would be to be able to teleport without any machinery, without any technology, without any gadgets or gizmos. And they knew that they would do so cautiously and respectfully and that they would learn from their mistakes. The end. We are the Zetas. We are your brothers and sisters.